Hello, and welcome to this fourth grade episode of Math Matters. Today, we will continue to learn about the addition and subtraction of fractions. For this lesson, you will need a pencil and some paper. Go ahead and gather those materials now. Today, you will continue learning to add and subtract fractions. You will also be a communicator and a creative and critical thinker. Let's do a splat with fractions. The total on the screen will be five. Here's what we have so far. How can you determine how many are under the splat? You can work it out on your paper or in your mind. How did you think about it? Maybe you thought about counting up to five. I can see that there is two and one third outside the splat. I know that another two thirds would get me to three. Three plus two more is five. I can see that I would need two holes and two thirds to get to five. So there should be two and two thirds under the splat. Or maybe you thought about it a different way. We can also think of this problem as subtraction. I know that my total is five and I need to take away two and a third to find out what's under the splat. I can do that in parts. Five take away the two holes is three. Three take away one third is two and two thirds. Under the splat is two and two thirds. You will hear these words today in the lesson. As I read and describe each one, Think about whether this is a new word for you or a word you've heard before. The numerator is the number above the fraction bar. The denominator is the number below the fraction bar that tells us how many parts to make one whole. Like denominators are two or more fractions that have the same denominator. Unlike denominators are two or more fractions that have different denominators. The sum is an answer to an addition problem the difference is an answer to a subtraction problem. An add-in is one of the numbers that we add together in an addition problem. These pictures show us that these rectangles have the same number of equal parts, tenths, but different amounts are shaded in each rectangle. These fractions have like denominators. How much of the shape will be shaded when we add the shaded parts together? Maybe you thought about moving the two parts into one rectangle and showed that two tenths plus three tenths equals five tenths. Is there another way we can think about five tenths? Five tenths is equivalent to half. So we could also say that two tenths plus three tenths equals one half. Let's subtract using like denominators. Both of these rectangles have been divided into 12 equal parts. If I have 7 twelfths and subtract 5 twelfths, what will the difference be? Maybe you use the pictures or thought about the numbers 5 and 7 and knew that the difference was 2. 
Maybe you thought about all seven twelfths and actually removing five twelfths, and there would be two twelfths left. No matter how you thought about it, seven twelfths subtract five twelfths equals two twelfths. Solve these problems with like denominators on your paper. Go ahead and check your work. Some of these sums and differences have equivalent fractions that would equal the same amount. Do you see any of those that you could name as an equivalent fraction? Here are some of the equivalent fractions you may have thought of. We can add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators as well. What do you remember about working with unlike denominators? You might remember that sometimes when we add or subtract fractions with unlike denominators, we want to find a like or common denominator first. So how could I divide up these squares so they each have the same amount of equal parts? If I divide both rectangles into six equal parts, now each rectangle has sixths. How does thinking about the rectangles divided up into six change how you are thinking about the problem? I can now think of one half plus one third as a problem with like denominators since it is equivalent to three sixths plus two sixths. That equals five sixths. You can also use what you know about multiples to find common denominators. On your paper, list the multiples of two, that means count by twos, and the multiples of three, that means count by threes. Look for any numbers that they have in common. After you've written your list, we can see that both sets of multiples have a six. We call this the least common denominator because it is the smallest number that they have in common. Now I can make equivalent fractions with a denominator of six. You might already know that one half is equivalent to three sixths, but how can I figure out how many sixths are equivalent to one third? I can use multiplication. Since I multiply the denominator thirds, by two to get sixths, if I do the same thing to the numerator, I'll keep the fractions equivalent. 
I can see that one third is equivalent to two six. And now I can add three six plus two six to get five six. Give this one a try on your own. Two thirds subtract one fourth. Work it out on your paper and then we'll go over it together. One way to solve this problem is to first find the least common multiple for three and four. If I list the multiples of three and four, I can see that 12 is the least common multiple. This tells me that I have to turn two thirds and one fourth into equivalent fractions that have twelfths as the denominator. I'll start with two thirds. I know that I can multiply those thirds times four to get to 12. If I do that to the denominator, to keep the fraction equivalent, I must also do that to the numerator. That gives me eight twelfths. Two thirds is equivalent to eight twelfths. For one fourth, I know that if I multiply fourths times three, I will get to 12. I also do the same thing to the numerator, which gives me an equivalent fraction of three twelfths. Now I can think of this problem as 8 twelfths subtract 3 twelfths, which gives me 5 twelfths. 2 thirds minus 1 fourth equals 5 twelfths. Today, we continue to learn about adding and subtracting fractions. Can you describe the difference between like and unlike denominators? What are you still wondering about after watching this lesson? Thanks for joining me for this fourth grade episode of Math Matters, where we learned more about adding and subtracting fractions. I'm Miss Ott. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.